Waffle and Ali have graciously offered to answer some questions from us uh, about the history of MC Ball, their lives, the universe, whatever you may have. So I thought we'd start off pretty easy. Uh, so how did you guys get into video games? Let's start with uh, Waffle Tastic. How did you start video um, games? How did I get into video games? My dad, I, I played Duke Nukem <laughs> when I was like five or something, which is like not a game for five-year-olds. <laughs> it's uh, anyways played it. Basically shoot aliens and kill them, and it's terrible. But uh, yeah, nice played Return to Castle Wolfenstein for a long time. So basically FPS is all since the beginning. Um, and I don't know, I just been I was addicted to them ever since. <laughs> uh, a lot of RuneScape, World of Warcraft, played Toontown. There's a Rune, there's a private server for that now. It's actually kind of fun. Um, I don't know. So yeah, that's how I got into it. My dad got me into it. What about you, Ali? Um, I'm honestly trying to remember exactly, but I think I just started video games at such a young age. Uh, it, it, I think it goes kind of like either PlayStation 1 or like maybe um, the Game Boy, the classic Game Boy, if anyone remembers it. Yeah, so I was playing around with like Game Boys and just, you know, Pokemon, like all that kind of uh, fun stuff. And eventually, I think I discovered the PC at the age of five. And uh, I just, yeah, five. Well, here's the thing. It wasn't, I wasn't even supposed to be on it. I kind of just jumped on it because I, I was really curious. And um, I just like kind of fell in love with this thing that you can just click on and break and i always broke the pc like every day there would be something new that i broke and then my parents would be like ali fix the pc you broke it and then i'd go i don't even know what to do i literally just click a bunch of buttons and it fixes it again and um yeah you that's kind of like how I... developer what the <laughs> <laughs> see i think i had it always in me actually but yeah that, we'll leave that one for another part of the questions <laughs> explains mc ball okay yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how they get you. <laughs> well, so then, kind of following from that, how do you get into Minecraft? So you played all these other games. What brought you to Minecraft? Um, we want to take turns. You start first, Ali. How did you get yeah. into Minecraft? Um, I think the year was twenty uh ten or twenty eleven, early twenty eleven. I was you know just in school. I was bored and I had a PlayStation three, and I was kind of just figuring out like what i wanted to do i was bored of playing call of duty and then um i found like i think it was c nanos on youtube if anyone remembers him uh and he just started showing off this game and then there was a few other people there was like this other guy called like wolf 21 i think um there was like a bunch of different people who just don't exist today actually uh in terms of like their youtube careers um and yeah, it's, I don't know, I was watching a lot of videos and then I finally downloaded it on my, I had like a Toshiba laptop and it was really, really slow and bad. Uh, I got, yeah, I, I got like, I think maybe five F FPS when playing <laughs> Minecraft. It, but to me, that was like heaven. Like I was loving it. Um, yeah, that was that. Was that. Yeah, I got into Minecraft. Um... Uh, yeah, I just saw a lot of videos online. My computer actually wasn't good enough to uh, run it. So I, I, did, I like showed my dad, I think I was like 14. I showed my dad that like my computer was not good enough. Uh, and then he got me one for my birthday. So it was awesome. But I actually originally bought Minecraft with my mom's credit card without asking her. Um, I'm pretty sure she like, she like charged back everything. So I think I might be on like an ex like a an illegal Minecraft license this entire time, <laughs> um, but so yeah, that's how I got into it. I just saw videos on like YouTube looked awesome pretty pretty early on. I get, I, I think it's a later question, so I won't do it going that that deep. But um, I started service pretty early on, other than MC Ball. Um, yeah, that's how I get. How did you get into it, Zergan? How I got into it? Um, so my brother actually was the first one of my family to play it. So we went around a friend's house and he showed us Minecraft and we were like, oh great. And my brother was like, oh, I'll spend my hard earned pocket money on that. And so I just borrowed his account for ages while we played World of Warcraft. And um, well, gradually my friends realized that it wasn't a terrible game. And so we started playing and then eventually we were looking for Minecraft servers and 
that's how I found MC Ball. So it was kind of a short span uh, between those two. But yeah, through uh, through my brother actually. Yeah. What was your first server? What was the first server you made or were involved in or that kind of stuff? Oh, remember like the first server that I joined? That like just as a server, I the one, first one I remember. I think they might still be around. I was really impressed with it. It was called Bucksville. Like B-U-X, B-I-L-L-E. I think they're still up. Wow. I could be wrong. But um, they were just amazing. Uh, they had NPCs like a long time before anybody else did. Um, I'm Googling them right now. <laughs> Apparently not yeah. too weird about them. Yeah, um, yeah. But um, so, yeah, I played on that for a while. I was really impressed. And I decided to make my own server. This was like right around when Bucket was launched. Um, so before that, there was H mod. So I joined right after uh, Bucket, which is these are like server mod wrappers. Um, and pretty immediately, I made a server called Wafflecraft. You can actually probably find some videos of Wafflecraft. I uh, used to the URL used to be wafflecraft.net, and that, that's where I met Ali actually. Uh, he came from yeah. her super. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, yeah, I did that, and I didn't make any plugins for it back then. Um, I didn't know how to code originally. Uh, you weren't but... born with that ability. What's that? You weren't born with that ability. Oh, I mean, I had to like, I had to discover it. It was like a Harry Potter thing, you know? <laughs> like, you have like, you, you type on the computer, and like sometimes some magic will come out, and there will be a program. But usually, you had to learn how to control it. Um, but yeah, so. I made Waffle Craft. I'm trying to find a video of it online. I'll have to post it to the chat later. Yeah, I Maybe think I found. Go for, go for it. Oh no, I think I. Uh, let me put it in the chat. This Brandon Smith. Is that ring oh, a bell? Yeah. I yeah. <laughs> oh my. You know, I wish I left a comment now. I didn't. I didn't think to see this. I think this exact video, which I've linked, um, might be the one that brought me on to Wafflecraft. It was um, either that or Mine Town. I think maybe I can't quite remember honestly. Was Mine Town ever a part of Wafflecraft? Or no. Um. Or I the other way so. okay never mind so yeah i think it was definitely on on this video then because there wasn't a lot of videos of wafflecraft on youtube and uh i just kind of searched cool. it up yeah but no the uh the, the server oh my god like i remember joining that server a very very funny story actually about the first time i'd met waffle right he obviously owns the server so he's got like OP this, OP that, whatever. Like, he's flying around. He's got all the cool kid, like, essentials, <laughs> commands, and, like, he can, like, do one thing, and he sets you on fire, blows up the whole world. There was, like, that that command, I think it was, like, Antioch or something, which, like, just made it rain TNTs. And uh, this one time, right, I'd, I'd never chatted to the guy. I was chatting to the mods for, like, a few weeks, and then Waffle finally comes on, because I'm pretty sure he's playing uh, World of Warcraft at the time, actually um and then he finally comes on and like he does some command and my house was built out of just wood and only wood and he wrote some command that just made everything get set on fire and he just logged off and uh that was that really <laughs> that, that was when i first like met waffle and then i literally just had to sit there repairing my whole house again <laughs> and like i saw him like the next week after that i was always a bit anxious like waiting for him to destroy my house or something but <laughs> i used to love to like grief as an admin like someone yeah. you, would, you could use an invisible command and somebody will be mining and like you would like fill in the blocks behind them and like so they didn't know who did it. I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um no, it was uh it was definitely a fun period, but that period, like I don't know, when did you start Wafflecraft? Um Waffle. Do you remember? Uh, I don't know. Because Probably I know eleven or you know, two thousand ten okay, cool. or eleven. Because I joined in about October, November 2011. So that was about six months after this video was posted, actually. Um, and then I 
think I like stopped playing two months after because it was kind of inactive, you know, there, there wasn't a lot of people playing on it and stuff. And then it kind of shut down after a while. But I remember, uh, and I don't want to be speeding ahead too much into how MC Ball started here. Um, uh, should I? That's the next question. So, uh, oh, okay, cool. How did you even choose Wafflecraft? Why would you go to Wafflecraft out of all the servers? Literally, but that, see, here's, here was the beautiful thing about Minecraft back in the day when I was first getting into it. There was no content, right? Like, it was a brand new game. People who were making videos about Minecraft back then were just making videos for the hell of it. They really enjoyed the experience of Minecraft and they just made videos. Um, and so it, it was just natural content that people were just kind of making like that video from, you know, Brandon Smith. Um, and I just searched Minecraft and that was the video that would come up, you know, because I think what I would have done is maybe like typed Minecraft and filtered by a certain time period or something, right? Um, not that there was a lot of content again, but um, yeah, I just came across Wafflecraft uh, and then, like I said, just kind of it shut down and then I moved on uh, to, to other things. But I do remember <laughs> now how MC Ball uh, had begun its journey because I was in Egypt. <laughs> Actually, th there's a little bit more story to it, but I'll just say this part i was in egypt and i remember like messaging waffle this was back on skype if you guys remember skype yeah. um there was no discord there was no none of this stuff there was ventrilo there was team i think at the at the time maybe yeah. um okay. and yeah and literally i just remember seeing waffle talking about how he's you know published his uh mc ball server or whatever i'm like Hold on a second. Waffle made this like paintball experience, whatever. What 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 are these public plugins that he's using, right? And um turns out it was actually like entirely pretty much all of it was custom, right, Adam? I think. Yeah. Literally, yeah. yeah. It, it was all custom. And it, it really shocked me because I was like, it, it's actually pretty damn impressive to to see how quickly Adam was able to progress, right? Because Actually, during the Wafflecraft days, you know, just before I quit Wafflecraft, I remember we started to, to frequently, more frequently talk, actually. And uh, you were telling me about how you're, like, looking into this bucket API thing and, like, writing a program or whatever. And I can't remember exactly what the first plugin was, but it was, like, it was, like, these space islands or something that you could, was it called Vaults, I think? Yeah, Vaults. Yes, yes. And I remember you telling me about your first customer who who I think was Sween, right? Um and it did it was just so cool to hear how it was possible for, you know, just someone who's basically in their bedroom, right, to kind of make that kind of shit happen. He's my French. Um <laughs> But yeah, yeah, and then I kind of just popped onto onto that train um, a little bit, but it never worked out for me. Um, and so now fast forward to when MC Ball launched and I was really impressed by what, what, what was actually possible. And it actually gave me um, sort of a boost to keep on trying on my journey to learn programming because keep in mind, like programming is not necessarily the easiest thing to do, right? Um, and yeah, it took me like a whole year before I actually started to figure it out. But yeah, that was basically uh, MC Ball's beginnings, um, which was June 2012. Do you think you would have gotten into programming if that didn't happen? Oh, dude, I don't know. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say because here's the thing, right? Like, let's go back to that story where I was like five years old and I was messing around with computers, right? Like in my head, I think there is something just just underneath that's just it's always been the case right to mess around with things and just break things and play with things so mc ball was just like i guess um a sort of a stepping stone if you will for me to start my journey um into like programming because i did start it before when you were doing your vaults um plugin because i also remember you were talking to sk89q if you remember the guy from world edit and I was really, I was really like, what the hell? Like, dude, I, I've been a big supporter of this guy and you come along and just send him a message for help. And all of a sudden you're sliding into his DMs as the kids would say these days. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, it was a very interesting um, 
period to be honest and I, no i'm definitely grateful that mc ball was a thing because that was a lot of my creativity like and learning for programming kind of happened from that right how about you Waffle? how did you get into the programming part um yeah i i mean i got into it because i wanted to make a minecraft plugins actually <laughs> Uh, I had seen, I had used a lot of public plugins when I was uh, on Wafflecraft. Um, and then originally, uh, I wanted to, before I made like a server, I was making, um, first I made some public plugins that were really simple. Like I remember, I think I made one that was like, it create like smoke particles when you teleport or like. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I think I made one that like I think he like freezes water when you walk over something. I think I might have done that. I don't remember. Um, but then um, pretty early on, it's actually kind of ridiculous. I found there was a big market for people who wanted to buy custom plugins. So like I didn't know what I was doing, <laughs> but you know I could read I could read tutorials and stuff. So like I would like I would like contact people like Sawin, who used to be the host of MC Ball, like the ho the server host. He's a person. Um, I yeah he was one of my early customers. He had Mine Town. He actually had like back when it was a big deal to have like over a hundred people online. This is before networks existed. Like he had over a hundred people online on one server. He had a big server. Um, he, I think he messaged me about like some support with one of my plugins, and then I offered to uh, make him some plugins for money. But um, so I ended up making him that Vault plugin that Al the Superman was talking about. Um, so like I was. He's like, I was like, I can do this for like a hundred bucks. Uh, and then I had no idea how to do it, but he's like, yeah, sure. That sounds good to me. So I'd be like, okay. And then I go and like, like produce the hackiest code ever, just follow <laughs> tutorials and on bucket and everything. Uh, and like the next, and at the end of the weekend, I would give him his plugin. So that's basically how I started learning, um, watching a lot of videos and reading and stuff like that. The commit. I mean, there was a big. Uh, I bet a lot of people initially learned programming for Minecraft. There was a lot of kids who um, wanted to, to create things, uh, and I was one of them. So, yeah, hell yeah. Yeah, I mean, that's one of the cool things about Minecraft is you can create things without too much difficulty for servers and stuff. So, kids, if you want to learn code, learn Minecraft. I back that wholeheartedly. Yes. Uh, it's it's honestly it's Legos but digital, right? And you can just kind of do a lot of cool things with it. Heck yeah! So we've heard a bit from Ali about uh, how it all started, but Waffle, tell us about why MC Ball. Um, why MC Ball? How it started? So I uh, I played on there. Were, there were there was a server. I think the guy who made okay. There's somebody who made an original version of like a Minecraft. Okay, well actually, I think Wafflecraft got like heavily griefed or something at one point. So I didn't have Wafflecraft anymore. Was it by you? Um, no, I think it like I, there was some exploit or something that allowed like the whole server to be wiped. I don't know. Uh, and I didn't have a backup at that point. <laughs> I saw a backup, we did. Uh, but anyway, so I was out of a server. I was like sitting around, uh, and then people were making all these like little novel plugins. And there was a guy who named Codename B. I mean, somebody in here might know who he is because he he's a uh, he's I think he's a big deal at um, Hypixel now. Uh, I think he's, he might be working on Hytale as well. If anybody knows what that is. Um, but he's been around for a long time. He made a paintball plugin or yeah, it was paintball. It was pretty similar to MC ball TDM. Um, and I was just amazed at how well it worked without needing like any real, uh, like custom mechanics. Like all you really had to do was, is write like the snowballs worked great for, and, and you could make a plugin that just functioned perfectly without actually like having to implement any physics. The physics were perfect in Minecraft. All you had to do was write the code for like who was gonna die and like where you teleport them and stuff. Uh, so concurrently at the same time, there was um, this Hunger Games was very popular, like Minecraft Hunger Games servers, um, and they had kits on them. And I, I had a lot of fun. I think I played with Ali a lot, Superham, um, yeah. on, the, on the Hunger Games. Uh, and I thought it'd be awesome if I could remake this game of paintball, but I could add kits like from Hunger Games. Um, and that's basically what I did. <laughs> so 
that's that's uh yeah that's how mc ball was born i just worked on it it only took me i think i worked on it for about like three or four maybe like five days or something before releasing an initial version and it crashed so often <laughs> early on i mean so yeah that's, that's how that's how tdm came out so is it the uh so kind of the next question is why did you choose the mechanic that you did was it mostly about the kind of keeping it simple or what drove you to those those choices um I liked how simple, yeah, like, like the format would be. Um, I've always played, like, the games I've liked the most are usually FPS games that aren't too complicated. Um, and I like games that, you know, you can just jump into and, like, kind of understand, but there's some more depth to them if you, like, spend the time. Uh, so, yeah, Empty Ball, I think, is really easy to, like, just understand. You just do paintballs. You get hit by one, you're out. If you hit somebody, they're out. Uh, this is even before capture the flag, and then if you want to use special abilities, you have a kit. So it was just pretty straightforward. Um, I mean, I just modeled it after other games, I suppose. <laughs> you started this kind of Hunger Games esque TDM type deal. What made you then move to CTF? Actually, uh, well, the main reason was um, so with TDM, you had, and we're still kind of face this issue, I think. But uh, with TDM, you only have one life. So people who are new to the game, um, it's like what they would do is they wouldn't know what was going on. Like they would just suck. And then they would instantly get killed by people that are much better as soon as they got there. And then I have to wait like a, a few minutes or something for the next round to begin. And I wanted something with respawns. Um, and I figured a, a better game mode than just like, have, than, um, just having everybody respawn and like keeping track of the score would be to add a capture the flag. So there's like an objective to go to and hopefully it prevents camping and things like that. So, uh, yeah, so I went to CTF and also I wanted some kids that can interact with the flag. Like I wanted more than just the uh, killing kids. So. Okay. So answer some, uh, some slightly controversial question now. So why oh. does Ninja work the way Ninja works? We've had this question in the past in chat and debated, oh, what was the original intention of Waffle? So what was your goal with uh, Ninja Kit? I wanted some maneuverability kits. I think at the time there wasn't anything. I mean, there was... I don't think we even had Flash early on, like in TDM. So that was the only kit that we had for getting around. And we just brought it over from TDM, I believe. Um... I didn't think I didn't really ever envision people being able to use it on the ground to like jump around very fast. They literally just envision people getting on top of things with it. Um, but I think it's uh, I don't know. Is it very why is it so controversial? Is it really overpowered <laughs> right now? It's the new protection. It's the new kind of we want this nerf type thing. Yeah. Do you remember yeah. the yeah. protection yeah. kit? Oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> Do you remember the uh, protection kit or no? The whole yeah, no protection. Everyone was fighting over whether we should know. Yeah. That. Everyone was always upset about protection because, like, it, it changed the, the most simple rule of one-hit kills, right? Um, mm -hmm. But the thing is, like, everyone always has to... Like, even at my current job in games, again, it's like people will always find something to complain about. And it's just, you know, it's it's fine. Uh, you know, we, we just always want to work to improve of course and uh how good is yeah it? it's it's the same are you talking about ninja no protection oh uh i can't remember what the nerfs were to be honest but i'm pretty sure it was nerfed right it was there was a slight nerf with like changing cooldowns i think on the the vest but I mean, right, right. it's about the same it's just people change what what people play changes what is seems powerful so, like, for example, Exactly is incredible with Ninja. And so it's gotten a lot of uh, attention. We did nerf Ninja a little bit ago, but it's been uh, the latest of the con controversial kits. Okay, so, Superham, how did you sort of get more involved in Empty Ball? So you started off as kind of a player. Oh, this is cool. How did you get more into the fold? There was, um... So there was that summer in 2012, right, when I first found MC Ball. And by the way, it was popping off, like... A lot of people were playing uh, playing the TDM version of MC Ball, um, and I don't know. Like, I didn't quite like do anything 
too crazy at that time. But I do remember that Waffle and I had picked up communication like maybe sometime in October, November. And I think Waffle was saying how, uh, you know, there was this new game mode he's he's been working on and uh, he wants to release and it was, you know, CTF. Um, and yeah, like it, it, I think there was like some things that kind of needed changing. There was the awful hub. Well, in my eyes, it was beautiful. <laughs> I loved it. Like the little lobby, which was like, I, if I remember, it was made out of the oak stairs and it was kind of like a donut shape a hollow kind of donut shape it was ugly no one really liked it but i didn't care because i wasn't a builder and we <laughs> needed something to put the players in whilst they were waiting for the game right and then we kind of expanded that a little bit if you remember then there were like i think the podium rooms um or something on the right and then there was the there was like a little ship eventually in an update uh, it was just updating That's through the weeks, right? The there you go, there you go. Um, and yeah, I, like in terms of uh, getting involved with MC Ball, it was yeah probably late 2012, I would say. At that time, I had like not a lot of experience with programming, but I was starting to figure it out and um, put one on one together. <laughs> However, I had nothing to do with the development of mc ball at that point in time um i'm pretty sure it was just waffle right uh right good yeah and then when did you get involved in the coding side of it because we all know you from like blur and dev fame so like when was your first mc ball code debut yes so um i'm honestly trying to remember exactly when i or what my first feature was i was really good at just administrating the server right just running anything that needed to be managed or whatever um and then the coding i think i think it, it came in a time when waffle was becoming a little bit less active um with other priorities in life and i kind of just jumped on board and started writing bits of code and stuff um and it was the old code base so we're talking <laughs> 20 i think 2013 onwards or 20 yeah i would say sometime in 2013 onwards it was uh it was the code that ran empty ball and that's why it was good um but then there was a lot of rewrites <laughs> and a lot of things that kind of came after that you um, take this waffle are you happy with it <laughs> 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 I'll have have it. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I think that, you know, Waffle did a fantastic job getting MC Ball uh, just online running. Like, it, there was definitely a certain period where it was just MC Ball was all of the attention um, for Waffle, right? And that was really, really good because there was a lot of like growth and stuff happening. Um, and that kind of led, you know, that kind of same game played for another year or two, I want to say, before we started to introduce our, our changes. So it's a, it really is a testament to like the, the good job that Waffle did. Yeah, I mean, all the fundamental game design, basically the same. To this day, I wish Waffle was still around to review maps because your, your eye for maps was brilliant. So let's go back to Waffle for a little bit there. Um, so when you look back at kind of the time of MC Ball and all that stuff, were there any highlights, any particular events or uh, games or whatever that you, you particularly enjoyed? Um, when we started doing tournaments, that was pretty awesome. I remember like one time we had like 70 viewers on, on one of the tournaments. I don't know, what, what big events do we have? Do we have any like big turning events? I think CTF release was big. Um, yeah, CTF was pretty. Well, I would say that's a definitely a big one, but not not necessarily the only big one, right? Like we had uh, the attorneys, like you said, attorneys were wonderful. Um, what what's a I guess what's a what's a feature that you implemented waffle that wasn't really um popular? If you remember anything like that, uh, things that maybe MC Ball introduced first to the Minecraft. I know Magneto was way too strong originally. 
just turn it Mag- on for five seconds whenever you wanted. Yeah, Magneto was actually sick. Like the, the concept of it was pretty damn cool. Um, you know, and it's su- it's such simple physics, right? It's not even complicated. Um, <laughs> and yeah, there's there's a lot we could talk about in terms of physics and. Uh, you know, you can see in the kits how the kits have developed over time. Um, you can see kind of where the physics was learned or applied. I want to say like tournaments were definitely uh like a big part of it, right? We we weren't obviously perfect by any means, but whenever Waffle would do his his streams, he'd always have like the F eight like smooth mode on. And like he'd be doing like those CS:GO tournament like shots. If you guys ever watch CS:GO yeah. back then, <laughs> so there was definitely some level of professionality. And I remember Waffle had the same exact headset as the commentators for <laughs> those uh, tournaments, which was like it was a three hundred dollar headset, right? It was like that big boy with like the 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 pop filter. You still have it. I love it. Yeah, oh, get a new one. Get a new one. Great oh, answer. really? <laughs> MMX 300. Bear Dynamic MMX 300. It's <laughs> it's be yeah, I remember. Go get that. Link in the description. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded so it's sharp. It really did. Check out 10% off. <laughs> you know the original uh, tournament overlay assets? Still using those this day. Yeah. I literally spent like 20 minutes earlier cutting out bits of it to change and extend it along because it's just so good. Did I make that? Or you made that? I think you said Danny Dorito made it. That's the mm. name. Yes. Oh, yeah. She always was the Photoshop kind of person. Like whenever yeah, there was anything that needed, because well. she did the um, she did the the store images as well, didn't she? So like, what what was uh... on? Uh, Why did you decide to move on? I was, I mean, this is 10 years later, or I guess probably like eight years from when actual like serious development kind of stopped or seven years. Um, but I mean, honestly, I wish I did more for MC Ball back then. Uh, there was a lot of opportunity that wasn't realized for sure, especially with like expansion and, and how we already had a great game. And really, if we, if we had, uh, if I had known, you know, what I know today, uh, we could have made it very large and, you know, expanded the game modes and uh, brought more people on board, like developers and advertise. And it would have been a big, awesome thing. It could, still could be, honestly, if somebody wanted to uh, like, commandeer that uh, or not com- like just wanted to spearhead that. Um, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. I just a, uh, a, t- a teenager who uh, <laughs> got kind of bored of... Um, uh minecraft and uh, i wanted to do something new and i got really hooked on the uh, competitive uh nature of like counter-strike mm. um and uh yeah i just got hooked into that and i wanted to see if i could actually make it as a pro and spoiler i couldn't in counter-strike but i ended up doing it in overwatch for a while <laughs> it wasn't the best pro um but you know i'm kind of glad that i did that uh but as far as for leaving mc ball I I kind I honestly just kind of like I don't know I just lost interest at the time. Yeah, that's absolutely fair. And so yeah, you I love mentioned the great people the... though. I mean, look, it's still going right now. Zorgon's still here. I can't believe it. <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm, I'm very I'm very proud of Zorgon. <laughs> yes, I second that as well. It's incredible how much the community surprises me as well. Like. You know, again, there, what other server really has existed for so long and seems to just keep running? Like ten years, you know. Geez, ten years ago, what was I? What was I doing ten years ago? So, um, you know, I, that was the year of the Olympics, right? Um, I think again, I was on holiday. I was, I didn't even know I was going to do anything with programming. Like maybe I dabbled a little bit, but like, dude nowhere like nowhere near where where i am today like today i i am but certainly at least a good programmer right and really 10 years ago before mc ball if mc ball didn't exist you know what what would i be i have an existential crisis (laughs) sorry excuse me i mean i think we all do i mean we owe a lot to mc ball so yeah what have you mentioned your pro career briefly but what have you been up to since 
uh, back in the day? What have you been doing? Uh, after, so I didn't go to school for a while uh, after when I was doing pro uh, Overwatch and Counter Strike. Um, but then uh, I've been, I went to school, I actually go to UC Irvine, or sorry, University of California, Irvine in California. Um, I'm in my last year right now. I'm yeah, studying nice. computer science. <laughs> Uh, I'm doing several internships. It's a, it's a, it's a summer right now, so I'm do, I'm in one right now. Um, I'm probably going to get it. Uh, I'm either going to work remote to San Francisco or move up there for some uh, software engineering job. No. Um, that's what I'm doing right now. Uh, <laughs> Very cool. It's kind of grinding, you know, <laughs> trying to make up for years of playing professional uh, game, games. Yeah, because you made and, the notebook, uh, didn't you? you were on CLG, was it? Yeah, I was on Counter Logic Gaming. I I, I mean, it, it was cool. I wouldn't recommend it as a, a good financial decision for anybody if they, if they want to, if they're choosing a career. But so but I don't really play many games these days, honestly. Well, see, here, here's the good thing about being on a laptop. It's exactly for that reason. Like, I don't play any games because I'm always on a laptop. Like, right now, I'm sat in my room with my PC, my big TV screen. I cut, I literally had to dust off my keyboard. I like I, I've got the dirty wipes to show it, guys. Like, okay, well, I would actually show you, but literally, it's it was so dusty. I had to clear all of this off just so that I can play MC Ball now, which is you know, I'm playing with all the lovely people that are on online right now. I think we're like twenty players right now. Sorry, uh, you were saying Elijah. I mean, I was just about to ask you what you've been up to. Okay, so you know. When since I left MC Ball, and when I say left MC Ball, it's kind of hard because I never officially left MC Ball. I keep dragging you back. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Every um, two years, Ali gets a message. Uh, can you help me fix this, please? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and uh, you know, just getting the question alone, it's it's really good to know that you care about the server enough to you know reach out and you know get help which i don't always offer to the best of my abilities i suppose but it's it's at least something that's um been attempted um now in terms of since i left mc ball 20 i think 18 really is when i started to like um oh sorry no 2017 i want to say actually when i started to get focused on uni a lot more um because i went to university in 2016 so kind of a lot of my time which was just freedom 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 was just kind of occupied by a bunch of social activities which i die like i was in dire need of mm -hmm. um because you know i'm sure waffle and i can agree there was some times where dude, we had these we had these skype calls that would just go into like 24 hours because we would just that that nerdy that we would just be constantly on the internet talking to, to each other huh so i missed that <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know man it was actually a lot of fun here's the thing yeah. i i don't stay up too late um like i do sometimes but i don't actually stay up too late the same way i used to like i used to drink red bull and um just go to bed at like stupid o'clock and wake up at like another stupid o'clock um it wasn't very sustainable but it was definitely a lot of fun and i'm glad i got to do i'm glad i got to do that part of my life in that way as well um you know a lot of people you know everyone kind of takes their path in life and does their thing but uh, i'm just glad i took it the way i did um and got to go to university as well after that because university really helped uncover another side of me, which uh, was kind of hidden underneath somewhere. Um, so that was pretty fun as well. And uh, we, we both, everybody's ended up at a university in, in, in kind of roundabout, I think. If there's anybody that's deciding if they want to go to school, uh, I've done a lot that wasn't school initially, and I endorse it. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Stay in school, don't do drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah, it's definitely important to realize that school, uh, school is not always meant to be fun. Education, sure, but school is kind of about the process. And yes, you don't, you, you don't like it. I don't think you're supposed to like it too much. I liked it. Um, 
Yeah, you no, know, no, yeah. <laughs> school, school can definitely be fun. Like we all have our favorite, yeah. you know, uh, subjects and stuff, mm-hmm. right? But like in terms of uh, the whole experience, sometimes it doesn't always seem very appealing. But I will say that um, school is a great way absolutely a great way to prepare you for the real world because you know you learn a lot of fundamentals in terms of just even if it's maths or english or whatever just to get you off your toes into the 21st century and um a lot of things that i didn't quite have the opportunity to learn at school i ended up having to teach myself on online Uh, and thanks to (laughs) elijah here you know Actually, a lot of the work that um, I've done in recent years have some way revolved around maths or physics. And I can tell you now that I have barely just passed physics at university. Um, thanks to, you know, Elijah spending <laughs> his his time with me. You know, there was there was this period where it was just back and forth between Elijah. Like I would, you know, Elijah would come to me and be like, hey, I want to like, make this feature you know what do i do how do i write it and then i go back to elijah and be like okay well now it's your time to pay me back so what how do, how do i do this thing with the maths that makes the thing do that and then he'd be like oh dude it's just very simple you just do that and that and it just, <laughs> just kind of works and i'm like oh so the vortex kit literally is just subtracting two different speeds from one another and it was like huh what do you mean like I would, <laughs> if i wrote that i would have like tried to figure out the size of planet earth and like <laughs> the the diameter like i would have just went crazy with it but um yeah definitely a lot of things were learned in school and out of school as well you can learn in both wonderful so we're just going to go through some quick fire questions from chat now before we close out okay so uh from candyland we've got did any of you guys think mc ball would last this long in a short answer. Uh, not, no, I mean, maybe if somebody, I, I mean, I think if I had stuck with it, I maybe, like, but it's always hard to predict when you hand it off to somebody what's actually going to happen to it. Um, I think that, you know, in some form, it could have stayed around. Um, and, but it's it's like a testament just to how good the, the game format is. Like, I don't even take credit for that because I copied it from, <laughs> two different like, like several different uh games but like it's just fun it reminds me of counter-strike because it's like people play it for 10 years but the game hasn't updated it's it's awesome i it really like warms my heart to even think about that this is still going on and people still enjoy it and i wish that uh honestly that more people could discover it still because it should still be fun i mean it's one of those things that is kind of timeless i think in the in the gameplay mechanics like nowadays minecraft is like all these models and everything for all the new servers and it's like bedrock and but you don't you don't really need that to make a fun game mode um so yeah i think mc ball could have like an even brighter future if somebody took like if was really invested in yeah absolutely i think it's still still going strong and still can go strong obviously has got a funny one if you had to drown in any food what food would you drown in chocolate chocolate mm. Hmm. If I'm gonna die, I'm gonna die happy. <laughs> Maybe like like flavored oxygen or something, that'd be great because I could just live. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> like really okay. They have that at fancy restaurants. You can like suck on a balloon and like get a flavor. Ah, uh, okay. Uh I don't know. Uh I'm just gonna go syrup for waffles. <laughs> nice, nice. Maybe orange soda. That'd be good. <laughs> okay, I love orange soda. Like uh have you guys ever had uh, orange creamsicle soda? If you ever had it, you gotta have it. It's amazing. Orange what? Cream? Creamsicle, like a uh, orange cream soda. Like cream okay. soda is its own thing, and then you have an orange cream soda. It's like a southern US thing. So yeah, if you're ever here. <laughs> Damn, I've got to come over and visit then and figure that out. Yeah. Okay, next question. How much do you dislike being put on a pig with magician? I think it's at least five times better than Frosty, and I don't know why I added Frosty. <laughs> Should have only added Magician. I think it's not that bad, and I actually like Magician, so it's, I don't think it's too bad. Frosty grinds my gears, and it's stupid, and I should get, and get rid of it, everybody, please. <laughs> <laughs> In your opinion, what's a map that best represents MC Ball? Um, best represents MC Ball. 
probably Bedroom. I think that's a pretty iconic, the original. Um, even though it's not around yeah, anymore. Me, my soul. I think everybody <laughs> liked it. It was very, I think it was a pretty unique idea. Um, Castle Wars was one of the, or like the original, or sorry. Yeah, Castle Wars. Uh, somebody actually made that for, it was like one of the best maps. And somebody just made it right at the start of CTF. I don't remember who made it. They made was it for us. We didn't download that. What? That was made for MC Bull. Yeah. Somebody just made a great MC Bull map. I don't remember who it was. Like, if they just, it was an all time classic. I didn't have anything to do with it. I didn't modify it at all. Like, they just showed up one day. Somebody submitted it, and it was great. It was excellent. Yeah. Now, um, uh, Castle Wars was definitely uh, an iconic map. But as for, like, one that actually represents MC Ball, it's, it's hard to say, but I think Valhalla's definitely, which obviously is not an MC Ball map. It's Halo, if I remember correctly. Um, yeah, yeah. that that was downloaded that off of Planet Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, the thing is, the reason I say it's iconic is because I just remember the most chaotic games were kind of probably Valhalla, and it wasn't actually very fairly balanced. The map, I I don't know, maybe it was. I I it wasn't my favorite map. Let's just say, but I do remember it was definitely the one with where you can get a lot of action out of it. And it was a very simple map design. Like MC Ball, one thing MC Ball did a lot of was kind of experiment and play around with different ideas and, and maps and stuff. And some of the maps were crazy complicated and others were just kind of straightforward and simple. And those ones also worked pretty well, I think. Wonderful. So I think uh, I've already kept you guys way longer than I told you I would. So uh, we're going to start wrapping up here. I um, just want to thank you guys for coming along, giving us some of that great history, fun thoughts, life advice. Uh, Waffle, you know, oh, you, yeah. you wish you'd done more or thought you could do more. But, I mean, we're all thankful for you putting this server together in the first place. Uh, Ali, I mean, you taught me to code. So, I mean, a bit of physics is nothing. Thank you, Zorgon, for running, uh, for running MC Ball along with Buffo. For all these years i've been so i've been so impressed with um everything um you're doing so much better than i ever did honestly um i'll just round of applause <laughs> i'll see you again in the next 10 years i suppose <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh who knows maybe i'll have kids by then and be married and uh, i don't know oh we'll see last decade and it feels kind of crazy to say that we've seen so much change in the world crazy things happening awesome things happening there have been 23 marvel movies three u.s presidents three summer olympics gangnam style the ice bucket challenge the queen became the longest reigning monarch a car was sent to space the world population has increased by 667 million people 10 countries have changed their name and the james webb space telescope finally got finished it's been amazing hey who were just young kids at the start, grow up. To see numerous graduations, concerts, achievements, marriages, and even some new MC Ballers who weren't born yet when this all started. It's been an absolutely incredible journey. MC Ball has had its ups and downs, but it's been there for all of us throughout all these things. For being the man behind it all, whose creative vision shaped this server and this community, for putting this ship to sea, a swashbuckling thank you to Adam, aka Wafflefastic. Of course, he couldn't have done it alone, MC Ball has been supported by a brilliant team of staff over the years, whether for just a short time or for the span of the entire server like Ali, aka Superham. Every moment spent making MC Ball the place that it is has been a drop of gold into our community. So a golden thank you to our staff team, past, present and future. When acknowledging our staff, it is of course impossible to ignore our new, or at this point just newer, leader, John, aka Buffwatz. His long-standing support of the server and new inflow of ideas, direction and leadership has been wonderful to watch unfold. Thank you, Buffo. MC Ball has meant a lot to a lot of people. Close friendships have formed that have grown out of MC Ball. I know many of my close friends online, some of whom I've gotten even gotten to meet offline, including you two, were ultimately met through MC Ball. Isolation during the pandemic was, and still is, a rough time for the world. But with such strong online connections, it didn't feel isolating. At its core, MC Ball has been a great family and the single strongest, longest lasting community I've seen in Minecraft. I will always maintain that MC Ball is hands down the best Minecraft paintball experience there is. But as much as we're built around a game and shaped by those running the server, at its core it comes down to the players. All of you out there who've played MC Ball, 
whether from the start or just joined in the last couple of years. Those who have laughed with us, cried with us, lived with us and played with us. MC Ball will be absolutely nothing without you. Most Minecraft servers, especially servers like MC Ball, end up fizzling out or blowing up. But MC Ball has lasted for 10 years. And that is a testament to the incredible community that we have here. So for the years you've spent, for the games you've played, and for the family you've built, we extend the serious of thanks to you, the players, our MC Ball community. But here's to our decade together, and here's to the decade to come. Signing off tonight. Cheers.